All right, so making trees. Uh, making trees can be somewhat of a complicated uh, process, um, but I have um, broken it down to three uh, sections or three stages in order to make it a little bit more uh, graspable. Uh, there's a whole philosophy that goes on in making trees, and there are some modelers that actually just model trees. And don't get your hopes up, that's not an easy, not a job that is readily uh, uh, asked for. Anyways, uh, so, and trees also, we've, we've gone over this in class, trees are, um, uh, have evolved a lot in games, uh, especially due to uh, the advancements in um, processor power and uh, graphical processors. Um, so I'm going to show you some ways. I'm not going to go into the history of it, but I'm going to show you some ways that trees are made, and then we're going to make some. So this is a little bit more of a fantasy kind of uh, tree. It's um, it also looks a little bit like an older style tree, and the the reason I can see that is um, is because there is a um, it uses these little umbrellas. There we are. These little umbrellas are the ways that uh, that I would make trees uh, back uh, when we were doing stuff for like early uh, Xbox and you know PS ones things like not PS one well yeah for PS one and others uh, but you can also see where the uh, polygons are um, are chopped over there you can see it's not too terribly rounded um, but it also is a little bit cartoony so you still might see a tree like this in a game that's a little bit cartoony and you can tell that it's uh, it's hand painted uh, which also adds to the cartoony aspect of it um, but let's look at some other trees here uh, let's see here here's another one this one also is a little bit more cartoony and it too has the uh, has the the little tree umbrellas. Um, sometimes uh, they're making tree umbrellas is is useful. Um, here's another one with tree umbrellas. Probably all the same game. But let's look at some different ones and some more modern examples. So, for instance, this one is a little bit more modern. Um, there's one element of it I don't particularly like so much is how it has all of these extra verts in it those are not totally necessary you can see how this is a little bit necessary because it has this curve uh, which is pretty nice um, and that adds to the uh, uh, to the to the tree um, so this would these guys would all be uh, transparent textures on planes and that's how the tree actually gets to look like it has leaves uh, let's look at some other trees here uh, this is a pretty good one. Uh, this is obviously all the branches are not, or all the uh, leaves are not uh, textured. Uh, one criticism I have about this is that it actually looks like these leaves are not proportionate with the actual size of the tree. I think the leaves actually should be bigger, uh, but you know, whatever. They probably spent a lot of time on that tree, so I won't blame them for that. Here's a good example of uh, looking at um, a tree with the um, with the transparency, so now you can see what all those polygons are doing. Uh, you can see how having all these polygons over here uh, is, of course, fewer than having uh, every single leaf uh, textured. Uh, here is a, a GIF uh, showing what a tree looks like when you uh, rotate it around, and you can see over here. Here's the the leaf planes. Uh, this is ex uh, giving an example of uh, vertex lighting, which we'll get into uh, later. No need to worry about that at the moment. All right, so let's jump in and let's make some trees. So the tree that we're going to do here is, let's see. Oh yes, there are two kinds of um, two main kinds of trees. They are deciduous and uh, coniferous. And coniferous are like pine trees, and deciduous are like oaks or maples or whatever um, and so the important thing to do is to have um, references uh, you can just go on the internet if you if you want you know pick out whatever but as an artist uh, as an environment artist it's always good to have a collection 
of, um, of references for whatever objects. You'll also hold onto textures that you might have made before. I have this bark folder in it. I just have one uh, for now, but there are, um, it has the texture, the bark that would be used for a tree. Uh, it's pretty, it's kind of a little bit on the high side, 8K. Uh, and I have branches, and these branches are used to um, uh, for textures for making like those uh, those leaf planes. Uh, and I have a real life uh, example deciduous and uh, pine tree examples. Okay, so the tree that we're going to do today is this one here. We're going to work on this. So. Looking at this, we can see that, um, well, what kinds of things can we see about it? It's fairly simple. Uh, we have a big trunk. Uh, we have these tiny uh, little branches over here. And uh, then of course we have leaves. So the three stages of making trees uh, that I've come up with here is one is to do the trunk. So the trunk, means that we'll model things like this, this guy going up here, and then going over here, and going over here. Um, and that's the main thing. Let's probably go up here as well. And once we have that, a big part of it is done, uh, and then we can work uh, out from there. The second part is adding the branches. And by branches, I mean like this little part over here and then we'll also um, add the leaves onto that um, as just a start. So we'll have the texture for that. Now, what's neat about this is that we can take these guys and we can uh, then duplicate them all around the tree. So we, we're, we're not going to, you know, go crazy with tons and tons on there because, you know, you still have to think about polygon count. So that's the second stage is the branches with the leaves. And then the third stage is just texture mapping the trunk. And that's pretty easy. Um, you'll just use uh, cylindrical mapping, or you can use a, um, a technique for texture mapping a tube um, that we discussed and unwrapping and just making sure that nothing's pinched. So with, uh, without further ado, let's get into making this tree. All right. Okay, so we're making the first tree. We're going to put in a image plane because that's the easiest way uh, to start with uh, making trees. Uh, when you get more adept at making trees, then you can uh, work from your own uh, from your own references. But uh, let's see here. So that one, we'll do that. Okay, so to start with, we're just going to make a cylinder. Let's make a cylinder. Create a cylinder. We're not going to want one too terribly uh, tessellated because uh, we are going to smooth it later. So let's give it 10. 10 seems like a good one. And I'm going to smooth out all the edges. Uh, so that we start with a, a nice smoothed uh, object. And to do that, I have smoothing smooth edges on my uh, custom panel. But I can also go to Mesh Display, Soften Edge. And then let's look at it from the front. And let's also put it on X-Ray as well. And then we could probably select this one. Select the image plane, put that down to alpha gain of zero of uh, 0.5. <clears throat> okay, so we make this guy smaller. <clears throat> we basically just go up the whole tree like so. Okay, so there is the start of our tree. 
Now what we do is we'll uh, select the faces and we'll just extrude the faces. So I selected that top and then I deselect the bottom over here and I press Control E and um, click that one down and just move it up. And now I'm going to, when I, um, when I scale this, I'm scaling with the yellow box because that's getting all of the axes, not just left and right axes. And press Control E again, because I had that one selected already. And now we're getting to the place where it's going to bifurcate. All right, and to do this, we just look at the top of it. And let's uh, select only one side of it. That's probably the bigger one. So we'll select these guys over here. Let's select those. Move that off. Select the other side. Move that off as well. And make them a little smaller. Make those smaller there. So now we have the bifurcation here. And we're just going to move them a little bit more into the location where they should be. Okay, so there we go. We can fix that up a little bit. Uh, those of you in the character class might recognize some of these skills. Kind of similar, especially when it comes to the uh, use of the, of the image plane. Now, we have another one that's going over here, and that one can be a little tricky. I'll show you what to do with that. Go over here, rotate this. And select the top of this one here. Deselect those. Click that down. Move that up. So uh, also, in order to make it a little bit more manageable, we're not going to make it totally perfect when we're uh, making the basic part of the tree. And you'll also notice I'm just in one uh, one dimension here so far, which I'm going to change real soon. But I want to go up this, uh, this branch up here and just keep uh, extracting, or extruding rather, and let's move that up, make it a little smaller, and extrude again, All right, this one, I want to make this one a little smaller. Okay, so, so far that's looking pretty good. <clears throat> and so we're going to go to this guy. So now I'm in face mode and going to extrude this guy up. Now I'm starting to get into where it's going to overlap so I need to actually have uh, some perspective on what this looks like. So I'm going to take off x-ray so I can actually look at the tree here uh, and it's starting to look pretty cool. Delete some history, smooth out the tree um, and so now we're actually seeing uh, a tree. It's uh, coming into fruition. So what I'll do here is I'm going to move these guys a little bit out of the way, um, how I think that they might be in the final version. And I'll also uh, change a little bit of the scaling of each of these branches. Mm. That's good. Scale this in just a little. Move that off a little. Deselect that one. 
move that one off a little bit. And now I'll move off to the right, this guy a little bit. You select that one. You select that one. You select that one. You select that one. Okay. Things are starting to look better. Now let's make this in here just a little less uh, looking like it's cut because also it goes in there. That's the crotch of the tree, so we'll move that in. Let's also bring these guys out just a little bit. Round up the tree. Okay, and with that, let's scale in this guy a little bit. Now we're trying to make it just a little bit more round so it doesn't look like it's uh, you know, squeezed out of a Play-Doh mold or something. And they're always getting um, smaller, the width that is, and branches do not go back in on themselves, which is uh, something you see in biology. Okay, so now we're really starting to get a tree going there. Now I want to show you what it looks like if we go into subdiv mode. So subdiv mode, it looks all right, but there are some things that are just a little funky about it. Um, so for example, um, the crotch of the tree looks a little bit strange, but we can control that. If we go um, back into poly mode, we go into multi-cut, you hold down control, and we add just um, an edge loop over there. This does help um, when we smooth it uh, to, to control it just a little bit more and um, make it look the way that we want it to look. So like I said, they don't get larger as it goes up. That would not be very realistic. OK, let's go back into poly mode. <clears throat> Much easier to work in poly mode. So uh, let's now add this little um, bifurcation over there. In order to do that, we're actually going to multi-cut on the side of it. So we'll go multi-cut figure out where we want this uh, this branch to go and we'll probably put it right around over here. So we'll just be cutting over there, over there, and close it up right there. And that's where we have our branch that's going to come out. And from there, we just press Control E. we move it out just like so now let's fix up this uh, this a little bit so that it's a little bit more uh, round
loaded. Okay, there we go. Now let's go back to our front. So now we have uh, this one over here, and we have this guy over here. And that is ready to start doing some more extrusion. I have my, um, my Maya set so that I can see when there are uh, edges that are not uh, smoothed. I think you can do it in Windows. Uh, UI settings preferences um, and edges but um, I'll worry about that later um, <coughs> uh, in, in general though you'll see that um, with mine all of the soft edges are dotted and all of the uh, uh, the non soft edges are, uh, are straight lines um, if there's an issue where it's not, yeah, those guys are all set. Okay, let's go put this back into shaded and then go back into x-ray, back into front mode, soften those guys. All right, so let's select these faces, deselect those. Now we're going to extrude this guy up extrude again extrude again you notice uh, too when I extrude something a lot of times I will just press control E and then W and that'll get it so that I can go right back to uh, extruding the uh, um, uh, right back to moving the thing instead of clicking on this little doohickey over there. And that doohickey over there actually is effective. It just follows the, the path that um, uh, of uh, where the, the previous edge was. Um, so it does come in handy sometimes, but for this, not so much. All right, so... That's probably good. Let's look at that in perspective with x-ray turned off. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Soften that. And of course, we're going to have to move this around because it looks pretty flat. Uh, okay, so back in to front view. And let's select those faces. Deselect all the ones we don't want. We should just have that top selected, which we do. Back to front view. Extrude W. We're going to have to guess where this, uh, what's over there. Extrude W. Scale down, extrude W, extrude W, okay, that's pretty good. So we're getting pretty close to um, to the second uh, element of it, which uh, we'll be doing the smaller branches. Um, and we still have just a little bit more here. I want to do these guys. So it's getting hard to see really what's going on inside of that tree now. So we're kind of making things up. I do suggest um, taking pictures of trees also, particular trees that you might find are uh, interesting 
uh, good reference trees. I know one of my favorite writers, Tolkien, had a favorite tree and uh, has a picture of him next to it. Um, but there's, uh, you know, if you, when you spend your time on anything modeling in the environment, you often find yourself uh, looking in real life at the things that you've been modeling. It's really kind of funny how that works. Um, so let's see here. How are we doing? So um, I'm liking how this is going. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start um, moving some of these guys around uh, so that it's not quite so flat. So what I would imagine is, is that this one probably comes a little bit more forward. So let's bring that kind of forward. Now notice I'm not just selecting one edge loop there and then moving it. I'm actually selecting the whole thing and then moving it and then just deselecting the next one. a little bit more changed around. Let's get these. Deselect that one. Move that out to balance it out a little bit. Trees are not always balanced, of course, which is what makes um, them so interesting to look at. Okay. And then I think this one also goes off in another direction as well. goes off a little over there. When you work with Maya for a long time, you get to be able to do all this rotation uh, pretty, pretty easy. <clears throat> Becomes very second nature. Now you'll also notice that some of these edge loops here are kind of curved a little bit, uh, and I don't really, I don't think that's too good. Um, that can be an issue. And try to yeah there we go it does make it a little bit bigger so we'll want to bring them down so and I told you guys not to use the um, this outer one uh, but there are times actually when you do want to use it this would be one of those times there's always going to be exceptions for things Okay, so it's looking pretty good so far. Cool. All right. Let's look at it from the front. Good stuff. All right, so <clears throat> what we can also do here is we can uh, add just a little bit of variation uh, and uh, do some edge loops. Uh, let's fix up a few of these things here. That needs to come out more. Uh, and you'll also notice that this goes straight down. I'd rather that didn't. So I'm going to do multi-cut and... Oh. That's interesting. Okay. That didn't like that. I must have... Uh, modified it in some way so it wasn't actually able to do a full multi-cut around it. Let's see where that had an issue. There it is. So let's finish that cut then. Multi-cut over here, 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 
and over there. There we go. All right, that. Let's go back to our front view, go back into X-ray, and select these guys and move them right over there. Okay, that's looking good. And then let's do some more multi-cut over here. Let's bring this guy in a little. Let's get some variation over here. Some variation over here. Oh, we got another one of those. Now this is a good example right over here in this section. Um, if we if we come in here and move this down a little bit, it's going to help when we smooth it out. It's going to look better. Um, smoothing in general. Uh, can have some weird effects uh, in trees and can make them look pretty bad. <clears throat> All right, we can also see some issues over here. that one. So let's go to perspective, turn off x-ray, and where was that? There it is. Okay, multi cut. Come that one, that one, there, and over there. And finalize it with enter. Go back into front, go back into x-ray, and then we're going to move these guys around. I'm going to move that down there so we have a nicer cross to the tree. So in our uh, in our second section, this is where the uh, the branch is going to. Um, that's where we're going to make all these separate little branches. So now I'm just going to go around here and just do a little bit more uh, of the um, just finagling the stuff to get it a little bit more uh, varied, so we can have some instead of a very blocky tree, we'll have nicely gnarled tree. Multi-cut. So I'm essentially just adding a multi-cut and then going in there and moving it around so it has um, a nicer flow to it. Okay, so multi-cut. Nine. And let's see what else. Hmm. That's a hard one to get to, so I'm just going to put it back there and just move it down. 
multi-cut over here. I think I have another section selected. Yeah. Front, move that around. Multi-cut. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. And we should be done now with the first step. If I go over here, look at that. It looks gorgeous. It probably could use a little bit more um, finagling. You can see that this is a little bit too wide. to kind of slowly uh, get smaller. here. This could be a little more gnarled. Give it some character. All right, so that's good enough. So if I hide our background, we now have a really pretty, uh, pretty nice looking tree. And of course, um, when you make trees uh, for a for a game, you're not going to be making um, every single tree all by itself uh, and very independent. Uh, a lot of times, you're going to want some trees that are going to look kind of similar and just rotate them around. Uh, and uh, when you rotate them around. Uh, you're like, hey, that's not the same tree. I don't know what you're talking about. Totally different tree. It's over there. So, <clears throat> all right, on the next one, we're going to uh, do some small branches and add some textures to it. And uh, that will be a whole different uh, ball of wax. All right, thanks for watching.